maybe a week or two ago, I was praying for some people. For particular people. And I wanted to make sure that I was praying in the right way. So I started to look at some scriptures about praying to make sure that I was praying in the correct manner. There are a few scriptures that I looked up, but let me just do Luke 10, 19 through 20. I don't know if I am going to make another video on the other scriptures that I researched. So to the left is the King James Version, to the right is the Expanded Bible. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over, and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. 20. Now withstanding, and this rejoice not that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. So what is that saying there? This is saying... Let me say this. When you follow the rules and regulations of the Bible, you become a servant of God. When you become a servant of God, not a false Christian, but a real servant of God, you have you are given authority over demons. So you can't rebuke any demons when you are purposely, persistently, constantly sinning. Because it is your sin that is drawing the demons nigh you or near you. Let me give you a story. <laughs> I forget when, maybe three months ago, I forget. I went on a seven day fast. I actually was about two or three hours away from a seven day fast. No eating or drinking anything. It was really, really rough. So after the seven days, perhaps two or three days afterward, after the fast, I found it very hard to read and pray. It was very difficult. I believe it was a demonic attack. So I took about two or three days break, maybe more from not praying and reading the Bible or not doing it as much. I forget which. And I am not telling you this story to bring fear into you. I am not telling you this story just to entertain you. I am trying to teach you the authority that we have. Anyways, I was not in sin. So I went to sleep and all of a sudden, all over my body, I felt this 
demonic pressure pushing down on me. And when I say demonic, if this was to happen to you, and I believe it may have happened to you, you know that you feel an evil presence. So you know that it is a demon. Okay. I opened my eyes and I saw this blue head with white eyes with these tribal like tattoos over I mean on its face looking at me in a very hateful way as if I took its wife or something like I took the demons money or something I try to tell people about tattoos you believe that well since your favorite music artists or movie artists is wearing tattoos or having piercings piercings all over the eyebrows and nose and stuff like that that you should do it too when you do stuff like that when the Bible tells you to not do something but you do it anyways you have to know that you are attracting demons. You may say, well, what if I get a butterfly tattoo or a tattoo of a happy face or a tattoo of a dolphin? or any cute tattoo as you may exclaim. It doesn't matter what type of tattoo you get. The Bible tells you to not get tattoos. So when you knowingly, when you choose to disobey God, you might as well verbally say demons come to me you might as well say that because that is what they are going to do anyways so this blue-faced nobody demon or I only saw the head and the crazy thing about it there was light within its face like a light blue not really light blue like a blue face with light in it if that makes any sense to you when you see something like that I know that you may not have seen it and you are like well you know it could have been you was really sleepy and stuff. No. I saw this thing more than one time. <laughs> what are the odds? Out of all my life, well, other things have happened, but something like that when I saw that exact demon, I only saw it twice. What is the coincidence of me seeing it twice? Anyways, I was still tired. And when I saw it, my thoughts, or I could not think of anything, but my thoughts went straight to and to say, I bind and cast you out right now. And when I saw 
when I said it the first time, like, how can I say this? It disappeared some. And I said it two more times. I bind and cast you out. So each time I was saying that, it would disappear more, more, and more until it was gone. I could not see it anymore. What if I would have tried to punch it? Do you believe punching something like that would work? No. What if I tried to run away? You believe running away would have done any good? No. How can you run away from something like that? <laughs> The only thing that worked was using my authority that God has given me to tell that demon to leave. Let me say this, man. I believe if that demon could, it would have killed me. If it could, but it could not. When you choose to, <laughs> my Lord, when you choose to have sex before marriage, when you choose to steal, cuss people out, do all of these foolish sins, you have to know that demons are by you. If they could, they would kill us all. When you are in sin, if you die in sin without repenting, you can't go to heaven. The only reason that you are not dead now is because of the grace of God. But you are going around sinning, attracting more and more demons to you, believing that everything is a game. But if God would just allow those demons to attack you or to kill you, that's it. I was allowed to see that demon's face even when I was not in sin. If a demon was able to get that close to me, like right by my knees, when you in sin, imagine what those demons can do to you. I don't know if that makes any sense to you. Satan and demons want all of us dead, right? Yes. Why can't he kill all of us now? Because of the grace of God. But what you are doing, you are gambling. Believing that God is going to continue to stretch out his grace for you so you can continue to sin and believe everything is okay, you will come to God when you get ready. The more I serve God, the more I begin to understand God, the more visions and dreams about demons and stuff like that I receive, there is no incentive, no good thing that comes from disobeying God. You don't get anything good. 
you may be able to mess around with this woman or this man. You may be able to get money in the wrong way, but what you are doing and the risk that you are taking with demons and stuff like that, it is not worth it. I'm telling you. Yes, I like to make money the easy way back then. Yes, I liked to, you know, date women and do the things that I was doing back then. I mean, I used to like that. I don't do it now. I thought that it was okay and stuff like that. But seeing the things I see and experience and learning about God and hell and stuff like that, it is not worth it. And with the people that I speak to over the phone or through Facebook and stuff like that, this is the reason why I get really hard on them, like push them so hard and it really may irritate them. So be it. If you have to leave or you don't want to speak to me anymore, hey, that's fine. I am, if you are going to choose to speak to me, I am going to push you. And it may really make you angry. So be it. Because I know one thing, if I am not influencing you, that means you are going to be influencing me and you are not going to influence me to be like you if you are not serving God. No. No. It is not going to work. Because I am not going back. The reason why many people are not serving God because they don't understand the incentives that God gives you when you serve him. They are ignorant to the incentives. And that is a shame. I don't even go through when I was in sin and the stuff that I had to go through, I don't have that trouble anymore. I don't have, I don't know what to call it, where your mind wanders on problems to problem and all that. No, I don't have that. My mind is at peace. Yes, I may get attacked in all this foolish stuff here, but when I separate myself from these demonic TV shows and this demonic music that is out and these demonic people and stuff like that, I am at peace. Of course, I have to minister to people, but I am at peace. My mind is at peace. Because I choose to feed myself, I guess you can say, things of God by watching teachings about God, by praying and reading the Bible, things like that. I am constantly placing within myself things of God and not things of this world that are sinful. I am at peace. So I pray that this makes sense. You have authority over demons when you choose to follow the rules and regulations of the Bible. That is what God gives you. Demons know this to be true, so what do you think they are doing? They are keeping you or influencing you, persuading you to stay in sin because once you get out of sin, they no longer have dominion over you. They don't. But 
if they keep you in sin, they can do what they like and you can't really do anything about it because you are allowing them to be nigh unto you. You are allowing them to be near you. I pray that makes sense there. I continue to tell people and people are constantly saying how to get saved, how to get closer to God. You have to be willing to give up everything. The more you give up of yourself, the easier it is going to be to live for God. But so many people want their old life still. I was talking to this woman a while back through Facebook, and she was telling me that, you know, she knows God is real and she needs to do right, blah, blah, blah. But she was saying that she misses her old life. People are not willing to give up their life. Give up their sinful ways. And if you are not willing to change, you can't. You can't live in sin and serve God at the same time. I remember I was telling this one guy this. It doesn't work that way. What is going to happen if you keep on playing around with God, trying to live for God or do things of God, trying to teach people about God, while you are living in sin, knowing that you are doing wrong, what is going to happen, your heart is going to harden. And when your heart hardens, you are not going to repent. You are going to think that being a hypocrite is okay. And if you die in sin, you going around teaching people about God, but you are in complete sin, that makes you a hypocrite. And if you knowingly do this, I'm telling you, your heart is going to harden and you are going to get to the place where you won't repent. That is so dangerous. To the point where when you hear the word of God, it is not really going to mean anything to you because you feel justified <laughs> my lord i pray that this makes sense if your life is not right with god let me just stop right here and god bless